hello everyone welcome to another video tutorial on the code angle youtube channel in today's video i'm going to show you the proper way to start naming your angular components and services as far as angular 20 is concerned as we all know angular 20 was recently released by the angular team and with each new angular versions we have new updates in the angular framework so this releases usually brings about different reactions and reactions can either be positive or negative but irrespective of where the reaction is coming from we should always try to look at it from an angular point of view so now with the new updates which i'm not currently focusing on in this tutorial what i'm just going to emphasize on is the naming conventions so in previous versions of angular when you are creating a new angular component for instance let's say you are creating a login component so you have the name as login.component.ts file or login.component.html file now with the release of angular 20 that's dot component which is the the suffix that comes after the name of the component is no longer there so what you just have is login.cs login.html same thing with the service you no longer have for instance if you create a new service as login you no longer have login.service.cs file what you have is login.cs which can create um, a bit of confusion so one way to go about this is to um, add a suffix for the component or the service you are trying to create which is what i'm going to show you in this video without wasting much time let's get right into the action quick pause as you all know or in case you are not aware educative is currently celebrating their 10 year anniversary and in view of this they've hooked me up with three free one year subscription on the educative platform and if you've been looking for the opportunity to get a premium plan on educative but you find it difficult to afford this is a big opportunity for you with educative you get to explore different courses on python java javascript c docker vue.js r c sharp and a lot more if i scroll further down you can see they have a more comprehensive catalog of courses on interview prep system design aws generative ai as well as how to learn to code which i've spoken about earlier on different programming languages like python sql java as well as javascript and javascript frameworks and libraries like react angular and vue.js so this is a very fantastic platform so if you want to win one of these free one year subscription all you have to do is to take the following three steps very simple the first step is just to like this video so once you've liked this video the second step is to head over to the educative ch youtube channel which is educative and then you click on the subscribe button so once you've subscribed on the educative youtube channel then the final step is for you to drop a comment on this video expressing your interest in winning the free one year subscription on educative then this is how i'm going to select the winners the first two people to drop a comment are going to get automatically selected so those people can reach out to me on my linkedin channel or probably on my telegram uh, channel so once you reach out to me i'm going to let you know the process for uh, getting the subscription so the last person or the third person to be selected is going to be selected at random so other people that selected from the third person downwards i'm going to select them at random and then i'm going to reach out to them by replying to their post and we're gonna get them hooked up with the one year subscription on educative so this promo is gonna run between now and the 30th of june and that is uh going to be on a monday so he's going to be available between now and monday so that's when the promotion is going to be or the free one year subscription uh promo is going to be available for so thank you very much as you participate in this and with that we can now head back to the tutorial now in my terminal i'm going to check my angular version which i can get by using the command ng version so once you type this command in your terminal you are going to get the angular version you currently have on your machine as and as you can see i currently have angular 20 which is the latest version currently running on this machine so the cli as well is angular 20 as well as the dev kits called the dev kits architects schematics and angular schematic as well so with this we can now create a new angular 20 project by using the ng new command which has always been the command for a very long time now so i'm going to type in ng new and then i'm going to call this component since what uh, this project rather since we are trying to uh test out a naming convention so i'm just going to uh, call the project naming then i'm going to press enter then we're going to be presented with this with a prompt which is going to ask us if we want the um, angular application to be a zoneless application which doesn't have zone.js although as you can see it's currently in developer preview so depending on your choice you can either select yes or no but i'll go with yes and then i'm gonna press enter then we get presented with the styles version the style sheet version we want i think this doesn't really matter 
answer but let's go with css and then we can finally answer the last um, prompt which is if we want static or server side rendering we don't need that here so i'm going to select no and then i'm going to press enter and a new angular project is going to get uh, generated for us now that the project has been created i'm going to cd into the project directory which we called uh, naming and then i'm going to open it up in visual studio code by typing in code and a full stop now the project is being opened in visual studio code so i'm going to break down uh, a few things here so usually this is how an angular project is structured you have the src directory then within the src directory you have the app directory as well and within the app directory you have the app.component.html as well as the app.component.cs file but this is no longer the case all you have now is just app.html then you also have the app.cs so the components like i said at the beginning of the video has been removed so if we try to create a new project now rather if we try to create a new component uh which i'm going to do in a moment so i'm going to create a new component by typing in ng generate components let's call it a login and i'm going to press enter and a new component is going to get created for us so as you can see if i head back to visual studio code we now have the login component which is login.html login.cs so the component has been removed so it's no longer login.component.cs file but the issue with this is that um when you create a component this way what you have is export class login and the suffix which usually comes at the end that lets you know that this is a component is no longer there so for instance let's create a new service so if i decide to still create a service by typing in ng ng generate service the s stands for service and i press enter so let's see how the service structure is gonna look like so if i head back to visual studio code and i scroll down a bit and i add to the service so you can see what we have here is um export class login so this can be very confusing because you don't know which is a component and which is a service so for instance if you head back to your component i think this is the component and you try to import the service by probably creating a private service let's say let's call it private alt is equals to let's inject the service uh, which is a login you can see so this is a service ideally this should be login service but because the new update in angular 20 no longer specifies whether it is a component or a service this can be very very confusing so ideally when you work on a project using the normal naming conventions in previous versions of angular you are going to get an error because angular is going to get confused because it, it won't be able to differentiate this login component from this login service so ideally what you want to do is every time you want to create a component or a service now you need to specify the suffix so what do i mean by this for instance if you want to create a login component just put an iphone and then type in component so you just have ng generate component a login dash component same thing for the service if you want to create a new service let's also do that for the service as well uh dash dash uh, service not components ng generate service then login dash service so uh if i head back to visual studio code if you check out this uh login component if you head to the uh, ts file you can see this is now recognized as a login component which clarifies things um this was um by default already implemented in previous versions of angular but the new version of angular for angular 20 if you don't specify uh whether it's a component or a service you can get confused so if i head to the service as well where we have login dash service you can see it identified this as a login service so when you import this uh into your components uh let's say if we import this into the login.cs file so let's say login service the intellisense would be able to identify that and then you can just you know import it into your component so it knows that this is a login service and it doesn't get confused uh when you don't have the service at the at the end of the login naming convention so that's what i want to point out in this tutorial so when you are creating your new component and your new service in your angular 20 project make sure you add an iphone and i and specify whether it's a component or a service to avoid any form of confusion or error i think maybe this is something that will be improved upon when the new version of angular is created i don't know why it is created this way for now but it's something that should be looked into because it's very very confusing the first time i tried to create a new project with angular 20 i was faced with this and i was you know surprised that um this kind of maybe design flow is allowed to you know get into the production but whatever reason why they allowed it i don't know but i just thought i should put it out there so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video do give it a like and then subscribe and i'll see you again in the next one thank you